I've been working with these SunPower Sun Vaults for eight months now, trying to get them to work in multiple scenarios. And we've had different levels of success with off-grid being the easiest and on-grid being a little harder. On-grid using a grid tie inverter, AC coupled solar for charging the batteries being the hardest. Hopefully we end there and that's the hardest, but we'll see. Um, the key, and I'll, sh I'll show you how, is this little miniature computer to be able to fix it all. But let me show you what we've got here. So first of all, we're not using this second sun vault, but right now we are using this sun vault. So we've got a 6.8 kilowatt Schneider low frequency split phase hybrid inverter. We've got the Insight gateway, which controls the inverter uh, configuration wise, monitoring, etc. This is the SunPower MIO, MIO, multi input output. And it controls things like the cooling fan and keep alive to the batteries. And then down below, we've got three of these six and a half kilowatt hour sun power batteries, lithium iron phosphate. So that gives us a 19 and a half kilowatt hour capacity in this cabinet. Getting more to what I wanna to talk to though, we've got a grid tie inverter here with solar panels out back. And we've got this Schneider BCS. This is the backup control switch. What this does is it allows the, the grid to come in one side and then the output to come out the other. So these are my, my load breaker panels, my house, if you will. Um, so my inverter is connected to there. My grid tie inverter is connected to there. If I flip this switch, it isolates my whole warehouse along with my inverters away from the grid and I can operate off grid or I can turn it on and be grids there in case I need it, but everything is still back here behind it, right? My problem that I was having though is with this grid tie inverter, if the grid was on, then if it would obviously supply loads in the warehouse, but anything extra would just flow out to the grid. And I could not get the gateway, the inverter to see that it was flowing out, which it had CT clamps, so it knows that it was flowing out, but I couldn't get it to just charge the batteries with that power instead of letting it flow out. And I worked with Schneider support. They worked with me for a day or two, trying to figure it out, trying different settings, looking up stuff. And they said, yeah, it's just not, it's not documented. And it's possible that it's still a thing. And if somebody knows if it's a thing, let me know. But in the end, it was like, we, we can't do that. But what, what Schneider did do, and that's, that's one of the reasons that Schneider is in this cabinet, right? Is that they published all of the Modbus commands that you can write and read to this inverter. So all it really requires is knowing what settings need to change when and just tell the inverter what to do externally instead of relying on the Insight Gateway to do that. That is where my orange pie came in. Why is this an orange pie instead of a raspberry pie? because I bought them during COVID and you couldn't get a hold of Raspberry Pis. Doesn't really matter, just needs to be a small computer. So what I did is I installed Node Red on here with help of others. I don't often figure out things all by myself. Um, I can't take full credit for that. I was on the DIY Solar Forum, Will Krause's forum, and there's some very smart people there and they had already at some level kind of done this, right? So I got some tips from them. And what I've got now is this orange pie is reading how much we're trying to export from this BCS via those CT clamps that are installed in there because the gateway knows that number, right? So I'm able to pull that from the gateway and then do some calculations and say, hey, I wanna turn on charging at the inverter. And then it can just, every two seconds, it can change how quickly the inverter is charging to those uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And then I've got it set up where if we're not charging anymore and we start importing power, then it can flip over into grid support mode and it can start zeroing out the meter and run on batteries at night. Even though they're still connected to the grid, you're not using anything from the grid. So that's what I've got right now. One, there is another piece that I'm gonna have to play around with, which is when you are off grid and your AC coupled, the Schneider's gonna try and control the grid tie inverter via frequency to slow down the charge rate once the batteries start getting full. So that's one that I'm gonna have to play with. I know that it can work, um, but you gotta mess with grid support, pro grid profiles and you know frequency watt stuff. And so that's a whole nother level that I, that I haven't gotten to yet, but we've got this working and I've been testing it today and I'll show you some of the, the visuals uh, of what we've got. Okay, so looking here, you can see that the solar panels, we've got 2.6, 2.7, 3.9, we're a little cloudy today, coming into our main breaker panel. 1.2 kilowatts is being used by the loads. 
And so the inverter in my in my you know my Pi, my node red, is trying to keep this around 200 watts of import from the grid, which means I'm charging with 2.6. And I'll show you some of the pertinent settings here if we go into the configuration of the inverter. One thing you gotta have, you know, your charger on. You've got your nope, not in there. Charger settings. It, 99% means that if we're below 99% on our battery state of, state of charge, then the Schneider's going to be charging. That's something that Node Red is going to change for us. And then you've got your grid support. So anything above 6%, we're going to be supporting the grid and zeroing out the meter. So, I mean, I'll, I'll provide an output of all of the settings that I've got, but those are the few ones that get changed by Node Red in order to make sure that we are uh, in the proper mode and at the proper wattage in order to keep this from getting out of control. Now, let me also show you, I'm gonna pull up Node Red itself. Let's see here. Um, we've got, this is, so this is the, this is the program that we're using. So every two seconds it triggers, it's going to read how much power is being imported from the grid. It's going to read what's the current charge rate of the inverter, the Schneider inverter. And it's going to read the current recharge SOC. That's, uh, you saw that setting right over here a second ago, but let me show it to you. It's under charger settings. That's this number right here, the recharge SOC. Uh, it's combining the data and then it's going into our logic. So this is kind of the, the heart of the script. And I mean, I could step through this whole thing, but really I just ha had AI write it for me and adjust it 5 million times to get it to work correctly. But it then spits out, depending on where we're at, it'll spit out the new charge limit, which is how fast the Schneider can charge the batteries. It'll set this either to 99% to charge or 6% to support the grid. And then it'll set the charger state to active to make sure that the inverter knows that it can start charging. Um, and that's, I mean, that's, it seems really simple now, but you know, took me a little while to figure it out. Um, and here we are, we're charging away. Um, once it gets full, Typically, on a normal grid tie inverter, once the batteries are full, the Schneider can't do anything with it, and so the power would go right back out to the grid. What we did, though, is we've got this good wee grid tie inverter with CT clamps. So we've got a pair of CT clamps right here, So and then we've got the uh, zero export configured. So if it ever stops, if the Schneider ever stops charging, it'll actually slow down the output of the good wee until it hits about 150 watts import um and just not export to the grid so you'll see this number start to match this number in at least in our system if i had an interconnect agreement then i could let it flow out no big deal and get some credits for it uh, but i don't want to do that here so